Hello and welcome to a new video about my barbecue controller. Last time I told you what I'm planning to do. Now I've implemented it, now it's working. Um, and I want to explain you, of course I had to cheat, uh, cheat, uh, tweak. That's the word, right? <laughs> I'm not cheating. Uh, not always. Huh? Uh, I have to tweak a little bit here and there. Now to the principal, to the principal, uh, function. Well, there is one object now called chart object. Okay. So there's the chart object and the chart object you have to tell whether, uh, you know, from your screen, from your screen, the resolution of your screen or of the area what you want to have. Yeah. So, we have resolution X. Pixels. Resolution Y. Pixels. This you need to give to the chart object. Alright? And then you have to give here uh, X min and X range, I call it range. Yeah. Those two things are in units. Yeah. Units. I am using milliseconds as a unit. Okay. I'm using milliseconds there. So I have here I don't know. At the beginning, I would I want to have here zero, and I want to have here if it's six minutes. I want, this is then uh, thirty-six thousand. Yeah. Six minutes. Six minutes is three hundred sixty. Three hundred sixty thousand. Six three hundred sixty thousand minus. Huh? So these are long values. Are these? And we also have here x uh, y min. And y max also in units. I'm using one hundred degree Celsius, one hundred part of the degree Celsius. Uh, so I have here, uh, let's say, uh, one thousand. Then it would be ten. And the range, oh, range, it's range. Also, net max. I wanted to have this equal, so it's range. Yeah, and then you have I don't know, three thousand. Then you have from ten to forty degree. Okay, this knows the object chart. Yeah? So we have here uh, uh, x resolution resolution. Resolution, then minimum value and range. And why? Also, here we have resolution minimum value and range. And then I have data. Yeah? First data, data row. It's pointing to an object I call data row. Okay, I have a data row object. And this data row object, this has uh, pointers. To the previous and the next data row. Yeah? So this is pointing, there's a pointer here, this is pointing to here. Data row zero, number zero. Yeah? There might be data row number one. And so on, yeah, one, two, three, and so on. 
Yeah. And those data row, they are just there to, to be the header, yeah, to, to represent the whole row of data. Yeah. So I'm using here temperature 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. These are the data rows. Yeah. And we have pointer to the previous. Here, so it's a, uh, we have a pointer to next. So this is pointing then to the next. Yeah. And I also have a pointer to previous. Yeah. And here is now. In this case, if it's the first, it's now. Yeah. Now pointer. Here we would point for the previous, so it's a double double chained. Yeah. And then we have a uh, first data point in this row. Yeah. And I also have here the, the object data row. Now data point. Data point number zero. And this is pointing to here. Alright, this is pointing to here. And this data point has x and y values, no wrong values, huh? data point has x and y values, and a pointer to next. Data point, and there's data point number one, and this is pointing down here. And so always only to the next, to the next, to the next, because I only tend to read this in, 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 in line. Okay. So also here, x and y values and so on. And every time I add a data point, I will sort it according to the x value. So I will sort it here somewhere. So it's always a sorted list in x in X. Usually it's not the end. Huh? And that's it. And here we have a method uh, get coordinates of row index row index indicating which row and value index. Indicating which value of this row, right? And then we get x and y, and and there is even a return value, a boolean value. If it's wrong, if it's false, then I have not found this data point here. If it's true, I found this data point, and uh, here are somewhere. Pointer to pointer to long values where the the, the uh, where the no values are inside the the values the, the coordinates yeah? and you can even say usually by default I have mirrored the y because usually here it's zero zero yeah it will be calculated here zero zero yeah? And if you mirror the, the Y, you will get immediately what you can draw on the screen. And now I show you how this is working in, in, uh, in real software. Yeah? And here also, uh, how this is working, how this is looking. Okay, so at the computer, let's see here. I have used this chart object here. This is the chart object. Here's the H file. You can see there's the chart object. There are uh, resolutions, X, Y, range, and first row, nothing more inside. Uh, and the data row, 
Uh, well, the data row is just a pointer to the previous and to the next and the first data point and the data point has just a pointer to the next and the values x and y. Uh, so it's working exactly the same way as I described you. However, there are some things like kill data points, for instance, this is eliminating, eliminating all data points uh, or uh, where is this here, clean values will clean all data points which are below a certain minimum x value or within a range of x. Yeah? So that we're not summing up and summing up and summing up all data points. Uh, here also add value. Yeah? You can call it with x and y or you can call it with only with y. And if you call it only with y, it will be automatically filled in with, with uh, milliseconds. Right? So this is this is the end. This is the implementation of this stuff. It was quite some work. Right now we have around 440 lines of code. Uh, of, of course, yeah. You see, I, I did some debugging, so I did some debugging output because it was not working at the beginning. And yeah, here, trend. This is my chart object. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. This is my chart object this trend here and it is starting here 160 to 105 this is the resolution x resolution is 160 this is the resolution of my screen here and 105 is the part of the screen i want to use yeah and x will start at minus 360 second will use 360 seconds and y will start at 10 degree and I will make 30 degree difference uh, 30 degree difference and what's this for here uh, ah I want to add automatically add four uh, data rows okay good and down here that's all we have to do Every time I get a new temperature, I will not only store it here in temperature and print it out. I also have tweaked a little bit the printing, you will see. Uh, I wrote the print temps. Yeah? So this print temps uh, is just printing in the correct color, printing uh, the value, the temperature value, the currently measured temperature value. And then I also have a trend add value. Yeah? Temperature number, so this is the number of the row and the value, yeah? y value. Woo. Where did I print now? Yeah. Here, this is the y value. So x value I will not give because the millis will be filled automatically. Yeah, and then I will automatically update the minimum x value. Yeah? Say the current millis minus the duration. So whenever I could get a new data point, the data point would be would be somewhere out uh, because I'm displaying the history. Yeah? So I have to scroll the history a little bit to the side, and this is the doing. Yeah? So the new the new most right point is the actual milliseconds, and minus time duration minus the range. Good. Yeah? And draw lines. What is draw lines doing? Let's have a look at this. Draw lines is filling the clipping area where I want to have the chart with black, then drawing two lines in white, so x and y axis, and then is drawing lines. Yeah? Drawing line one, two, three, and the line drawing will just use the correct color. Okay, then I will get coordinates, x and y coordinates for the row and zero. Yeah. If I get these coordinates, I will draw a pixel uh, this at exactly these coordinates. Yeah. If I'm not getting the coordinates, I'm already done. Well, then uh, there is no line to draw, then I have not found any, any data points. And here, then I remember the actual, the last coordinates, increase the index 
and ask the next, the next coordinates of this row, the next data point. So I'm going through one data point, one data point, one data point, but only in case uh, I'm getting a data point. If I'm not getting a data point anymore, I know I'm at the end of the line. Uh, so then I will stop. This is this while condition doing. So if this get coordinates is delivering false, uh, there was no data point found. And I will only draw a line. Here's the draw line with the correct color and so on. And I will only draw a line if both coordinates, the start coordinates and the stop coordinates are, if at least one of, of those points is inside the area. If it's just somewhere outside the drawing area, at too long in the past or too high temperature or whatever, uh, then I will not draw this line. If the start and end point is outside my view, I simply don't have to draw this. Hmm? That's everything. That's everything. And now let's upload this. Let's have a look. They already, woo, you already saw now how this is looking. Where is the, here's my temperature pro. <laughs> yeah, the temperature pro. All right. So let's write. This is actually, this is actually how, how it's currently, currently looking. Yeah. You see the, the, uh, values. They will now, after uploading has finished, they will now all appear with zero, zero, zero and all appear dark. Yeah. So you see the red one, the red, ooh, now the red one is updated. You see, it got a little bit brighter. Then you see, mm -hmm, here we have uh, now a value. Okay, a valid value. So 24 degree. See in my hand. Huh? And now I am, we do not see any trend in the trend area. Now we're getting a trend. You see it now it's 23 degree. And here this little red line here. This is the beginning trend. Yeah. We do have, uh, we do have, um, what else? Six, six minutes on x axis because we defined it with 360,000, uh, uh, milliseconds. Uh, and once I will put this, I'll put it here. And we should see a reaction. Uh, measure, measure my temperature. <laughs> if I'm ill or not. Ah, you see, now the trend is already going up or to the right side because I did not want to, to change the direction of this. Uh, yeah, you see, it's reacting 26 degree and so on. And every time I get a new value, I will draw it. And with this approach, I'm only storing the values I'm interested in. Yeah, because if I will clean out the values after they have left here on the, actually I'm using double, double, double the x axis. Yeah. And if I have a lot of, lot of, uh, data points there, then I will, uh, then I will have a long list of data points. If I'm only having in these six minutes, I don't know, two data points, then there are only two data points. They're not really matter. Huh? Because this is adapting simply. Because we said, okay, there is on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the producing side, uh, we will trigger only if we have 0 0.5 degree difference or after so that and many, uh, that many seconds and so on. And so I have to come up with a solution for this. And you see, this is looking really nice. And I've already tested it also with one hour yeah? and one hour trend should be sufficient uh, to, to make a nice barbecue. Now we see the temperature trends of our barbecue probes. Yeah. i put this out of my... Uh, now it should cool off again a little bit. Uh. Working. Ah, what I really 
don't really like if you look close at this at this trend yeah, you see there is some flickering going on whenever i update the screen because i am drawing a black a, a black and then a new line you see this line reappearing from one side to the other side actually it's working pretty nice but i tend then also this this flashing i don't like this there would be the possibility of a canvas yeah? of a copy of the content yeah? and copy this canvas then just do it in memory the updates and so on just do them in memory and then copy the memory to the display <sighs> i'm not yet sure if i should spend that amount of memory just this is not flickering or if i'm dealing i have to operate this somehow right i have to operate this so i need to i need buttons uh, i need uh, some menus or whatever yeah i need to do this and therefore i will do this i think i will do this next time because you know the issue is look at the board look at the board a lot of inputs and outputs are already used yeah even if all is operating uh, by bus and so on but this is there are not that many yeah and i want to have buttons 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 yeah? different buttons so then i can scroll left right up down and so on enter and i don't want to live with only one button Next time, uh, I will try a solution for that issue uh, to have different buttons, but only use one input. Yes, you heard correct. One input. And we will have, I don't know, I will think about that. How many buttons? Next time, I will explain how I want to achieve this. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.